Hi everybody, welcome to Kelsey Ed. Today we're just going to be looking at absolute and relative motion and just creating a quick game to demonstrate how relative motion works and then you can expand that idea yourself into something more. Basically we have two types of motion, absolute and relative. When we have an absolute motion, what happens is the end point where you're going to go to is already decided. So if you see here, go to negative 140 x and y 40, which is basically where I am right now. So you can see that. So if I now change this to be 100 and run that by just clicking it, he moves to exactly that point. Now, no matter where I put him, if I press this, he's going to go to that exact point. That's called an absolute motion because we absolutely decided already where we were going to go. A relative motion is like this one for moving 10 steps or gliding to the mouse pointer. So if I select this one, he's just going to move 10 steps. You can see him moving on screen now. No matter where I put him, he's going to move 10 steps. He's just going to move relative to where he is. But this one, he will absolutely go. And this one here, he's going to move relative to my mouse pointer. So if I set it and put my mouse pointer over here, it'll follow it. Now, that's not going to work without me putting that into a small forever condition. But if I put that on now, he's forever going to follow my mouse. And that's a lot of what the game is that we're going to do today. So first of all, I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Just throw these away. We don't need them. And we're going to start off by making... A kitty cat. Now obviously this is a cat but there's um <laughs> there is one cat that I would prefer so I'm just gonna go into the costumes here um, and choose and hopefully he should be actually let's just search it let's be fast cat there you go see this cat's cute so this is like a little cat ready to pounce now remember as well we can edit our characters so if you want to and I do you can adjust your cat um, and decorate it. Now I'm going to use the fill tool and I'm going to fill different bits of my kitty with black because I think he should have a pattern. I think it's cute. So now he's got some cute black paws. I actually might just put some extra little bits on here. And so, you know, always make things unique, you know, be an original. The next thing we're going to need is a ball. So, actually, also, you know what? I didn't rename my sprite. Make sure you name your sprites. Kitty cat. So, the next thing I want to do is add another sprite. So, I'm going to choose a sprite. And we want a ball. So, here's our ball, flashing and changing. Um, if you want to take advantage of that, because here in the costume, you can see it has all these different costume colors. Remember, you can just set a bit of code really easy for that. So you just do a forever and change the costume. So let's see, switch to next costume, put in a small weight so that you can enjoy the colors, forget your trigger. So just put on the when clicked hat, just give that a go and we'll see he's changing there. If you want it to be a little more psychedelic, you know, you can change the speed that that happens or you could take it out completely but that's just that's too much for me maybe you like it so we have our kitty cat we have our ball now what we're going to do is we're going to set it so that the cat will follow everywhere that the ball goes and the ball is going to be controlled by us using the mouse so first of all in the ball section what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my when clicked, so from the start of the program, I forever want this event to occur. And all I'm going to do is set it so that the coordinates of the ball are exactly the coordinates of my mouse. So basically, relative to where my mouse goes, we will set this ball position. Now at the moment, it's go to exactly this position, negative 177, negative 36. I can simply go to sensing, add in mouse x, mouse y, 
And now, look at this, wherever my mouse is, the ball is going. So it's moving relative to my mouse. So I've taken an absolute command and changed it into a relative one now. In the kitty cat section, here we are. Gonna also, of course, start when the program is clicked and a forever command because we want this to repeat forever throughout the program. What we're gonna do is make it so that the cat will glide because we don't want it to go to. If we use go to, then it instantly goes to that position. So if I'm here and I press this, it's just gonna go straight away here. What we want is for it to take its time. So we can do a glide. Now if you use the glide here, you see how that's slowly, and at the moment it's going to a random position, which is great, but we're gonna be a little bit more specific. So we're gonna have it slowly glide to wherever my mouse is. So the X will go to the mouse X, the Y will go to the mouse Y, but it will take its time. So let's play that and watch. See how he's gonna come. Now, this is quite slow. It's not very hard to beat the kitty right now. So what we can do is we can make it a little bit faster. So let's try like a 0.5. There you go. Now my kitty's chasing my ball, but I've got a little issue because this, <laughs> look at this cat's like chasing me backwards. He's not even looking at the ball. What we want to do to make this more um, enjoyable and realistic is to actually have him point towards. So there's a command in here, point in direction. So we're gonna have him point towards the mouse pointer. So he's gonna to point towards wherever I go. So now look at him. Now you might find that you do that and he doesn't do this exactly. And it could be due to in here, there are actually a whole load of different direction settings. And there's three different direction settings and we have learned about them before. So this one here, do not rotate. If we set that setting, you'll notice that the cat is not turning anymore. So basically the sprite will never turn, its costume will always face in the same direction. You can also set it to this one, which is basically a side to side. So he'll just only flip, so it just flips the image, so he either points perfectly to the right or he points perfectly to the left we're going to use this one, the all around. And what that means is it's like the full 360 degrees of motion. So you can see he's like always pointing in the direction that this is set. Now we have a kitty chaser. Now you may want to jazz this up a little bit. You might want to put a bit of a background in here. So we can add a nice background. Um, what should we make it? Uh, maybe blue, mm, a little lighter, light blue. Okay, so I'm going to make this light blue. And I'm just going to make a simple rectangle. That's all I'm going to do. I draw a rectangle. Fill this up like that. And there we go. I've got a nice blue background. And I'll just name that blue background. And of course, you could put on anything that you wanted. So now one more of it, last thing that we could do to make this a little bit more like a game is put an end condition in here. Again, this will be something that runs from the start of the program when the flag is clicked. So we've got our trigger there. Then we're going to use a control to forever decide. And what we're going to do is play a sound. So if the cat catches the ball, then we're going to play this sound. So we want to play a meow sound and we need a condition for that. And so what's the condition for this? So basically if the cat is going to be touching, so remember touch is a sense, so if the cat is touching, and we'll set this to ball. So if the cat touches the ball, then we'll play a meow sound. Very effective. That's just going to keep meowing. What we might want to do now is to end the condition. So once the cat has caught the ball, the game can be over. So in the control section again, we can choose this stop all command. So if we touch the ball, play the sound and stop all. So now what will happen is if the kitty does catch the ball, he's gonna play a meow and then everything will stop.
and you'll see that the green flag stopped, the program's no longer running, and as I move my mouse, the cat has stopped moving. So that there is a very basic ball chasing game to just demonstrate the use of relative motion. So remember, we are moving relative to the mouse position as opposed to an absolute motion which goes to just one set position that never changes. Hope you enjoyed the game and please add some comments or links to better games that you've created based on this idea. Take care, see you next time.